The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Sounded bad, Billy Ray. Got a little bit of the Palo Verde today. The Palo Verdes are killing me today, but I'm under medication, so I should be okay. Boys and girls, I have posted the chart. Uh, I keep posting it because I get more questions about this than anything uh, that anybody sends me. So I'm going to try to go through it with you one more time. You'll see this chart here. There are three arrows. The first arrow was the high of the stock market in 1987. We broke down into the eclipse. We rallied up into the Venus-Uranus uh, aspect. This year, we did exactly the same thing. The sequence was, if you go from the 27th, 25th of August, 1987, down into September the 23rd, which was the solar eclipse, then you go up into the uh, Venus-Uranus aspect, which, which was, I believe, 11 days. Now, we did the same thing this year. The, diff the only difference is that the aspect was a conjunction as opposed to a sextile, and conjunctions are more powerful. In 1987, from the high that it made on October the 6th on the Venus aspect, okay, 17 days later, there was a crash in the stock market. Uh, I'm not saying there's going to be a crash in the stock market today, folks. All I'm doing is looking at that cycle. It had to do two things. One, top on May 5th. Two, it had to go lower, which it certainly has uh, from that, that, that last day. It's had bounces and stuff like that. All it means is that if you add those 17 days, just like you did in 1987, that brings you out to May the 22nd, okay? Now, maybe something big is going to happen between now and 22nd, okay? <laughs> but the, the difference is, is with the options market, the way they are now, the, the, they charge so much for puts, it's not even worth it. But I'll... <laughs> uh, memory lane is coming back to me. Okay, I'm, let's go back. <laughs> let's go back here for just a minute, folks. 1987, the market crashed. Okay, I was on a regular at FNN, which would be CNBC now because that's where it all started. That was Financial News Network in. Uh, Los Angeles. I was on every two weeks. I would drive down from San Luis Obispo to L.A., do the one-hour show with Bill Griffith or Sue Herrera, Ron and Son, or one of the three, and then I would go back and uh, do that. But during that time, it was uh, sometime, I think it was around the, right around that eclipse time, I told Bill that someday the Dow Jones was going to be down, you know, more than 300 points in one day. The most the Dow had ever been down up until that point was 190 points. And all I did was I multiplied that times 1.618, and that gave me the 500-point down move. Well, it was a lot more than 300-point down move. It was actually 500 and some points. But 500 points then, folks, was 15% and 16% in one day. Okay, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. All I do know is this. If it does happen... It's going to be the best doggone buying opportunity you've had in a long time. So that's all I can tell you, because that's exactly what happened in 1987. When October 20th came, which was the day after the crash, that was the best buying opportunity since August the 9th of 1982. So that's it. Folks, I make my living by short-term trading, and I'm, it's, a, it's a good living, okay? And that's all I'm doing. I, I, I do the thing that I really understand what's going on. Let, let me give you a couple examples for today. Now, these are the kind of things that we're going to be, you know, doing on the, uh, excuse me, on the, uh, the day trading thing on the 17th of May. And I, I think it'll be, uh, if it was like today or yesterday, you know, it would really be uh, really be a fabulous day. So, you know, we're waiting to see, you know, how that uh, transpires. Okay, here is the uh, chart I wanted to show you here. This was, uh, <clears throat> boy, boy, shut the front door and raise the rent. 
Okay, we're going to take a look at the crude oil today, folks. This is a four-hour chart, so you go back over quite a few weeks to see this. You can see the low that we made today was an exact 78% retracement of the low that we made way back here about 15 days ago. Look at the look at the big rally that we got off of that. That from 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 $99 a barrel to 105 a barrel is $6,000. I don't know about you, but that's a lot of bread. Let's say you did two contracts. That's a lot of money, you know? And uh, so all I'm looking at are those entry points to get an edge to see if I can be right or wrong. That's all I'm trying to do, okay? I mean, nothing more or less. People ask me, you know, what about long-term trading? I could give a tiddly twat about long-term trading. That's not what I do. Okay, now getting into long-term trading, we're going to take a minute and take a look at this. Okay, we have been short gold for quite a while, actually about two and a half weeks here. Let me get this up because this is a real important, real important thing that's going on right now. And I don't know if it's going to work or not, but let me just show you. This is gold. Now, we shorted it up here at this level right here. And 1965 was the first short. The second short was 1925. The third short was 1909. And we covered everything at 1831 last night. The low was, I, I just couldn't believe it, was 1830.6. That was the exact fib number to the tick of that low that we made way back here, you know, way right, right back here. It, it was that that that's how accurate it was. Not only that, but it rallied fifty dollar, uh, excuse me, twenty five dollars, and went back and almost tested it again. So this is really an important number now. I, I didn't take profits on the big rally or nothing. I I think it's got a chance to go higher, but. Heck, I don't know. All I know when I do that, I've got a $3 risk in gold. That's all I have. And uh, that's all I want to look at. Now, there's another one that's really important, too, and that is the silver. Let's just get this up here and show you what it looks like here because this is – I want to do two things. I'm going to do you the daily daily first. By the way, Shane Smullyan will be our guest today. Well, tomorrow is Paula Webb, and on Friday we'll have Peter Lydes. We have taken out these lows. You can see here, we took it out. We took it out. <laughs> We've taken out those lows uh, over the past several months, which you can see the 78% level. That's the yellow Gartley right there. That didn't last more than a day or two because we thought it was going to go down a little bit lower. And I, I very seldom trade silver. I should because I like silver. It just, uh, I got so many other things going on. I don't. But look at the weekly. Here's what I want to show you because this. This could be really, this could really be a big one, folks. But it, like I say, ifs and buts for candy and nuts would all have a wonderful Christmas. Okay, now here's a long-term view. There's, there's this. We were buying this stuff at 13 and 14. I, I was on a little soapbox preaching to buy the silver rounds. Okay, we had a hell of a rally. Okay, we end up here. This is a weekly chart. That was 78 percent. Okay, that to the tick. 78% of the high at $54 an ounce. Now we've come down. Look at this. We've taken out all this resistance here or support for a long time. We've taken it out, but we did go down. We bounced. That's why I think it's important. 877-927-6648. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, we have a caller from Philadelphia. It's none other than Mr. Z. John, how are you doing? Larry, very good. Hope you're uh, doing the same except for the, uh, the seasonals. But, uh, Larry, I want to give you just a 60-second contribution to your silver idea or silver observation. Uh, of course, Larry, uh, your history back in Southern California, you know well Jim Flanagan up at Claremont, California. He goes by the name of Gann Global Financial. It was, it was Jim who, back in the 90s, taught me the idea, he taught all his clients and subscribers, but taught me as one of them, the idea of bear traps to bottoms. And that is the idea where a market has made lows, bounced, come down, taken out a prior low and immediately reversed. And in Jim's words, that was the idea of longs against those lows had their sell stops just under the ethos those lows the market comes down elects those stops moves lower there's no more sellers the buyers jump in it immediately reverses turns back up and forms a bottom hence what he calls bear trap to a bottom well that just that uh, that particular feature may be at play as you just described in comex silver going under 2150 and then popping back above now it's clear there's no bottom proven at that time, but this is a candidate for a bottom. So uh, I just share that, and I know you know Jim Flanagan. I just wanted to share that with your listeners. Well, John, thank you very much, and you're right. Jim Flanagan is a premier GAN fellow uh, that does GAN work. I have looked at GAN, but you know it's not what I like to do. I'm simple. I have one thing that I look at. That's A, B equals C, D. And so that's really what I'm looking at. I think the most amazing thing to me, I, I'm a little away from the markets these, these last few days because I'm, I'm helping a neighbor doing some stuff. But if you look at this gold yesterday, John, it made to the exact tick the 61% retracement of that last major low way back there at the 17 whatever it was it was such a such a low number but it was, it was to the tick. 76 that was a low yeah, you were referring it, to back yeah, in august of it, last year it, it, it made an exact 61 percent it's rallied 30 dollars but it doesn't mean anything because the market is you know still jumping around but if we go below that number in the gold then we're going to go down to that uh, breaking the 1800 level and get down to around 1776 and then silver it, it, 
Yeah. yeah. So, silver Sorry. would fail, and, but the, boy, if silver gets to twenty cents, John, or twenty dollars, to me that that that's going to be the uh, that's going to be a hell of a trade if it gets to that level. That that's uh, I can show you. We can see the weekly chart what it looks like, but if it gets there, we'll we'll have to uh, you know have a special uh, chat about it because I think it's got a chance of doing it. Larry, thanks for sharing those parameters. I, I, and your uh, your listeners on Tiger TV will be looking forward to uh, your conversation with Shane. So, uh, thanks again. Okay. I'll hop. Oh, hey, thank you very much, John, for calling in. We appreciate it. That's John Charity, folks, from Philadelphia. Uh, goes into the Tiger Den, and boy, he posts some of the incredible trades that he does himself, and where he got in, and where he got out. Folks, I posted the chart of the thing called Coinbase, C O I N. It's had bad earnings and stuff, but you can see the beautiful patterns this thing has done. I mean, it's just incredible. This happens to be uh, one of the stock. I don't know anything about this Coinbase. I believe it's some type of a channel, not a channel, but a uh, venue where you can buy and sell. You know, cryptos, but the earnings were really bad. We've gapped down quite a bit. You can see the high from the open when it first started trading way back here. I mean, that's it. I, I folks, all I can do is give you information of what the charts are telling me, and I'm telling you something. I've been talking about this for s several days, and I've never traded a crypto, and I don't care whether you believe it or not. Uh, well, I don't care if you believe that, but whether you, whether you believe blockchains or anything are even important. But you can see here that we've broken down into cryptos very, very badly. Now, let me update this so that you're able to see how badly we've broken down. <clears throat> Just get it up here. Here's where we are. Okay. Uh, all right. One second. And I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff. Well, I'm going to be doing some of this stuff on the daily show that we're going to do on May 17th because it's got a real chance here. I don't know if we're going to make it all the way down to this level here, which is roughly 10,000. There's a possibility because enough people out there will say that, yeah, this is no good, and, and that's what you want it to do. Now, I'm going to show one other chart. Now, this is the same thing, but it's, it's in a different format because it's on a log scale, okay? Get this up here. Oh, that's not the one. Okay, Larry, well, here it is. This is the one I want. Okay, now this is Bitcoin, and I, I know it's a little cluttered, but I want to give you a, a rough idea of where we are, okay? And this this thing trends good because the public is in it. There's no question about it. These this is, You're talking about an almost $2 trillion market. Okay, now, since we, were, since we went way back in here, back in 2012, Bitcoin has had four more than 80% corrections during that time. I mean, these are, these are those big corrections. Now, we can get all the way down to here if it does. And if it does, there's a real chance that there's something really big could happen. And uh, we just got a lot of stuff going on in the, in the markets, folks, between now and the uh, 28th of May, there's just so many things going on, but that number would be uh, 12,000, we'll call it 13,000 uh, in Bitcoin if it were to get there, but Bitcoin is not where you want to be. You want to be, you know, someplace else where you don't have to put any, but buy something for pennies, and if you're right, you'll sell it for dollars, and that's what we're looking at. All right, let's talk just a little bit here about the Treasury bonds. Wow, a lot, a lot to cover. I'm not getting it all done here. Hold on a second. Here's your treasury bond chart, okay? Now, we have uh, – just a second. There we go. <clears throat> We've had a nice rally off of the ABCD, right? and it was you know pretty substantial, four points. Folks, the bonds are so bearish that if we're still looking at 129 to 130 in the bonds, I still think we have a chance of getting there. So – Write that down and keep it in your menu because I think that is something that's important. Second one is uh, I want to show you the natural gas. Okay. <clears throat> wow. <clears throat> Shut the front door and raise the rent. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Okay, folks, let's get this one up here. This is the natural gas. Now, the low that we made right there, you see that 50%? That took out this other low. Where is it, right? That took out this low by uh, just a penny or two, okay? And it's had one heck of a rally. 
The swings that we're having in natural gas are absolutely phenomenal, folks. Let me get this up here to give you a rough idea. <clears throat> wow. Okay, here's a natural gas. All right. Now you can see it. It makes the big ABCD up here at the top. You can see the ABCD would come down, rally to a 382. That first move down, folks, was $10,000. This one was $13,000. And then we've rallied up and we're now, we rallied, we went to the 382, came back about four or $5,000. And then uh, we've rallied up to the 50% level. So wild swings in River City, folks. Let's take a break. We've got the Shade Man, the wolftrader.com coming up next. Don't miss it. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Okay, folks, we have the wolf trader himself, Shane Smolian, on the line. And uh, we have a question from a listener in Tucson, Arizona, Shane. Sure. And he would, he would like to ask you, what are the aspects between now and the 22nd of May that are important that you could see maybe something, you know, very dramatic in all of these markets? Is there something out there that would cause this? Yeah, uh, the lunar eclipse. I think that that's the next big event on the calendar here. We've got many of these coming up, uh, but uh, that's the big one. I'm going to talk about that today, the actual path of that and how it affects okay. the S&P. Oh, by the way, a little bird told me that somebody had a 10% day yesterday. Is that true? It, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. I, uh, well, Shane and I happen to be very good friends, folks, and uh, we he, he uses uh, one of my friends who's uh, – 
is a broker and he called me up and said who is this guy 10 percent one day he said that doesn't happen so good for you pal thanks there well it's just a day but i mean yeah there's many uh, more days tomorrow, to come tomorrow tomorrow would be a different restaurant i understand that program right. for sure <laughs> sure all right so um we talked about the stelium. I'm just going to review this real quick because it, it played a central role of the market in, for the first quarter of the year. And, and, and this stelium is a positive effect. The stelium is when the planets get together in the sky. Uh, we had this essentially, I think, holding up the markets or helping to hold up the markets during the first quarter. Uh, but the stelium is now over. And so it actually ended in May. So it's it, the term sell in May and go away is actually – it's it's very relevant now, especially with the stelium. Um, this was the COVID stelium. We had the, the the largest peak. These come in a series of peaks. Sometimes they come like waves, like when you're at the beach, like sets of waves come. So these steliums tend to show up uh, sometimes with multiple peaks. So usually after the largest peak, that's the end of the market. It might take it a little bit of time to come down. It's kind of like it's still drunk on on the the high energy. But the last peak in COVID was an actual low, and I think we're we're kind of retracing. That situation right now, that's actually what's happening in the S&P 500. Uh, we're coming down and uh, the stelium is over. So that that is that is in the rearview mirror now. So we're not going to be talking about steliums anymore this year. Uh, there, there will be more coming up next year and the year after. But steel, so we talk about eclipse season, steelium season is over. Uh, so this is not good for the S&P 500. So I just want to mention that because that's a, a broad-based – focal point that we do talk about quite a bit uh this i i made this indicator in alfie software uh, this is uh air software with the stelium index where i can actually visually see it uh but it's over so i just wanted to to, to mention that so s p 500 uh we had that big uh, inflation report this morning and the consumer price came in at 8.3 uh, i think some people were hoping it would come down to 8.1 or 7.9 even <laughs> uh but it's still high uh, so that that is not good, and the core CPI is still 6.2. Okay, and this is this is not the way they used to calculate it back in the 80s and the 70s, Larry. Uh, if they if they yeah. calculated it in those terms, would be would be over 15 percent. So this this is this is not a good fundamental look because it means that the Fed has to continue with the tightening effects going on here uh, with the markets. So. Uh, a couple of things about the S&P 500. We've been tracking just these horrible divergences in this RSI uh, in, the, in a money sorry money flow down here. So this is the money flow down here. This is the S&P up here, uh, and you can see that these divergences started forming uh, during that whole rally that we had. That that fake I call it the fake rally, or the the bright. This was the bride of Frankenstein rally. I have a name for each each failed <laughs> rally. Uh, this 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 one here that went up and failed. This was the what I call the poop slinging rally, where they were just throwing anything out there to see if it would stick. Uh, but the bottom line is, uh, open interest is falling. Uh, we got this divergence on the money flow, and then the, the volume now is actually starting to pick up as it's selling off, which is not a good sign either. So, these are just some technicals that I like to look at. I like to look at as many as possible because I want to get them all kind of lined up. Uh, this is the double lunar cycle here. Uh, I, I haven't mentioned this much. Uh, it's just been stuck in a cell since February the second. This is this is a very uh, highly educated, uh, through machine learning, highly educated system. So you can see it was trading a lot, and then it just gets stuck in the cell signal on February the second, and it and it's staying in a cell for the whole month uh. of May again. So this is this is interesting that it's able to catch that that something's up here with the S and P. This it doesn't it's not looking too good. Uh, this is the intraday look on the S&P here. Uh, I've been using these uh, Fibonacci speed lines. It, it's similar to Fibonacci retracements, but the speed lines actually kind of they start at this point here, uh, and then they and then they come down uh, into the actual retracement here. So these are the different retracement levels that you would see. Like this is the seven eight six. This is the six. This, this is the the six one eight. Uh, and so these trend lines actually come through, and they've been marking some beautiful. Uh, support and resistance lines here but we're actually breaking through this now and i think we're just we're just biding our time here until this eclipse comes for the next leg down uh it, sh it should generally be a positive period for the next couple of days but uh it's just so weak on a relative basis that uh that it's just it's just not good like it's it's it should be doing more than it is at this point so uh just just wanted to mention that and then um 
trying to, my pen froze up here. Give me a second. I've been having all kinds of, what's going on here? My pen is frozen on the screen. Sorry. Uh, let me see if I can use the mouse here. Give me one second. I have to cancel my, my pen here. Sorry, guys. Okay, can you can you can you see it now? I think we're yeah, I think we're okay. You still there, Larry? Yes, sir. Yeah, no, I'm watching. Yeah. Okay, sorry, it's, the, the pen froze up on me on the screen, so I had to cancel it. Okay, so we talked about that. Um, so these, so this is obviously we're going to have to draw a new set of these speed lines because it's it's making a, a, an even sharper downtrend now in the market. So uh, going on to the to the lunar eclipse. So this is the big story of the week. Uh, May has a lot of a lot of events unfolding. We have the Mercury station, which has been, you know, the market tends to fall. You know, when you have market crashes, it tends to happen around these events. Uh, we've been getting the selling for sure. When the planetary speed slows down, the markets tend to fall. And we, when you get crash situations, it's always around when the planets are moving slowly. It's it's really weird. It's really creepy, actually. If you go back to the flash crash, even in 2010, the planets were at their slowest point. 1929, 1987, 2008, same thing. Planets are moving slowly. Uh, the planets are moving pretty slowly right now, okay? Uh, so the lunar eclipse. So this is the, a map of the lunar eclipse. And, and it's actually going to be covering the eastern seaboard, uh, which is interesting. This is from uh, timeanddate.com. You guys can go check this out. They actually have an animation there, too. I was going to play it, but I'll let you guys go check that out. Uh, but it, it's going to be covering the, the all the exchanges, New York, Chicago. Uh, so... Usually, when these lunar eclipses occur, uh, they can—they're generally negative for the for the equity markets. And some events have happened, like Chernobyl happened when the eclipse was passing over Ukraine. So it's important that you know the regions that it's covering are the regions that uh, it tends to it tends to affect. So this—I'm going to show you a map here. So this is the actual map of the lunar eclipse and how does the S and P act up into the lunar eclipse. Uh, so this is important because. We want to know what is going on. This is a this is a single event, but it's actually pretty important. So this is what uh, what is called an efficiency test. So this is using this is Alfie's uh, software. So this is Air software. So if anybody's interested, uh, this is Alfie Lavoy's software. He came on the show, but we use his software for pretty much everything with the Astro. And uh, so this is showing an efficiency test. So what this does is this shows how does the S and P, which is this line here. How does the S&P act around a single event? And we'll talk about this more. Yeah, stay with us, Shay. This is really, I really enjoy this cycle stuff. We'll be right back, folks. TheWolfTrader.com, Shay Smolian. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks. We're chatting with uh, Shane Smolian of thewolftrader.com. Please continue. Sure. So <clears throat> just want to re remind everybody that what we're talking about with the planets here, uh, we're talking about cycles. So just like you would look at your watch, there's an atom, there's a cesium atom that vibrates at a certain frequency. These planets move at a certain frequency. So we're just looking at a big clock. That's all that this is. Uh, I do think that the magnetic storm was interesting, though, because this paper by the Fed showed that as the sun releases these particles, it affects our moods here. So I think there's something to this scientifically in terms of what's going on with the plants. But what we're talking about with these eclipses is this is generally, this is a timed event, this is a clock. It's just like we have a seasonal patterns, we have fall, winter, spring, and summer. That's what this is. So I want you guys to think of it more that way. That's just like you would glance down at your, at your watch. We're looking at the clocks of the plants. That's all that this is. Uh, it's wow. mathematical relationships. Okay, so this is the path of the S&P during the eclipse. So what's interesting is that the S&P generally tends to drift up uh, during these, right before the eclipse. So this zero here represents uh, the point where the eclipse happens, okay? So again, this is like laser precision. This is how the Mayans were able to calculate exact, you know, precise movements because these are following Newt <clears throat> Newtonian mechanics. And so when we get these alignments, we know that they're coming ahead of time because these are predictable orbits of the planets. Okay, so the market tends to draw up into this, and then after the eclipse, which will be next week, the market tends to fall. So you can see that, what, Larry, you're talking about this 522 date. You can see yeah. that this after this eclipse, it kind of falls into that window. Uh, I don't have all the dates here uh, posted. I post those for the subscribers in terms of the dates, but you can get the idea that after this weekend, it generally – falls after the eclipse so after the eclipse is the negative for these lunar eclipses okay uh the last time this happened was <clears throat> last time i had an experience with this was back in uh 2003 uh i had a position on <clears throat> a company called regeneron and this was right before the lunar eclipse in scorpio and lunar eclipses tend to accelerate events so uh if there's an event that you know things that have been waiting to happen tend to get accelerated so i, I was in this position <clears throat> and I had just, I had just met my wife, and I had to go to the Bahamas, and uh, this was back before the internet or anything. So we had to go. We had our our boat over there, so we would go service our boat. We were in the Abaco Islands, and I was explaining to her. I said, if if I get a margin call, you have to wire this money. I was telling her she didn't know. She, I had just met her. She's like, what is this guy telling me? But I I didn't know what was going to happen. So I was over there in the Abacos. I was in Chubke, and I was in this bar. We, you know, like a restaurant, we would go in and in the TV, I would just see the ticker and I would see Regeneron go across and I could see it was going up. And then when I got back, it had gapped up into a profit. Uh, and so this is an example of how lunar eclipses can accelerate things. And this, I'm in the sign of Scorpio, so it was in my sign. So lunar, lunar eclipses can accelerate events. So uh, I think there's a good chance we'll get some more selling coming in here. Now, if we take a look at the daily statistics of the S&P, I like to show this uh, to everybody um, today is the strongest statistical day of the week. 
So when we're talking about these statistics, again, everything that we talk about here, we're talking about astrology, we're talking about timing, clocks, and cycles. When we're talking about statistics, we're talking about statistics of how the markets act on certain days. So the S&P tends to be its strongest today, uh, and it tried to get up this morning, and then it collapsed uh, right around that uh, inflation report. Then Thursday and Friday uh, were, were the two weakest are the two weakest days. So this has been the pattern. So we would expect the S and P, if it's following this pattern, to continue to show weakness tomorrow and Friday. But the problem is that the the eclipse, the lunar eclipse pattern, says that it's positive for the next two days. So that's kind of an interesting uh, tug of war there. And again, when we talk about uh, physics and we're talking about vector addition, you know, you can have two different vectors going in two different directions and you get a net resultant. So what we see here is we have two different energy patterns lining up. The, the eclipse tends to try to draw it up, but statistically it generally tries to fall. Now, I would point out something about relative weakness because if it's not going up like it should, something's wrong and it will probably the selling will probably be even more intense next week. Uh, I want to talk about the Fed internals here. This is a chart that I want to show everybody because Mercury stationed is happening and all of my charts are coming in kind of scrambled. So I'm going to have to show you a little bit of an older chart here uh, on the screen. This is a little bit of an older chart. But this is what's going on with the Fed. Now, I focus mainly on what the Fed is doing. This is the wow. dominant feature of the S&P 500. The Astro and all these cycles, it's nice as, as background information. But this is what you need to focus on. What is going on with the Fed? Uh, that's what's going to drive the S&P. Uh, more so than cycles, more so than astro, more so than technicals. Uh, you're going to get this persistent selling since the Fed is falling. But what I want to point out here is there is a point here where uh, the S&P, it, get, it gets up here in the geomagnetic storm. Again, that's not astrology. That's just a study that was done by the Federal Reserve talking about the storm coming up. It ended the rally here. You can see this here. It ended the rally. And statistically, that's what happens. And then the Fed tries to they try to stimulate this market right after that high. So I want to. This is what I'm talking about when I say about relative weakness and relative strength. This is what I'm talking about here. So when we see this here, the Fed is trying to push this up. The market is ignoring the Fed here. Uh -huh. And so what this means is that the S&P was weak relative to what the Fed was trying to do. And so once the Fed turns back down, you can see the S&P collapses even stronger here. So. When I talk about relative strength, it is really important because what happens in the next few days will likely determine how strong the selling would be next week if we do get the selling. Uh, if you know we're supposed to be positive uh, based off the lunar eclipse, but if the S&P cannot hold up in the next few days, we're probably going to see some much more intense selling coming in next week. So I, I hope that makes sense in terms of what I'm saying in the big picture here, but we have to look at all these tools. Uh, and, and, and again, the Federal, the Federal Reserve is the most important thing to look at. Uh, I love to look at the astrology. I love to look at the technicals. But this is what drives the S&P 500, guys. This is the most important thing here. Wow. That's really important stuff. I really, really enjoy this because I have a strong affinity to the astrology stuff. So I, I really like it. So the 16th of May is going to be the lunar eclipse, correct? Yeah, it's Sunday night, um, uh -huh. and I, it's like late at night, so late Sunday night into early Monday morning. You can go out and see it, and if you're in the United States, you'll be able to see it. And on the, on the eastern seaboard, it shows up the clearest, and it's going to be over all of South America. Wow, oh, it's really amazing. Now, I have a question. Uh, this is for myself. Uh, when, you, when you put a trade on, uh, are you watching what the Fed does at that point, or is just the price uh, has hit your level, and then you look to see what the Fed is doing? How, how does that work? Okay, well, that's a good question. It depends It depends on the trading system. Trading system okay. that I run with the, the brokerage firm is not, it's not looking at the Fed, okay, but setting s very strict stops uh, at the open. When I'm doing this longer-term trade right now, I'm generally uh, trading smaller positions, and then based upon how it is acting, I might add to my position or subtract to my position, based on what okay. the Fed is doing. But based based on what I'm seeing now, like on the way down, I you know I had been short on this thing since December, uh, and and I had to roll it over in, in the ju the June. But I actually added a couple of times to my short based upon what the Fed was doing on a longer-term basis because okay. this these are longer-term uh, moves of the Fed. All right. Stay with us. We want to talk to you just a little bit more, folks. We're going to take a break. 877-927-6648.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. With market volatility roaring back in April, Larry Pesavento has just announced a five-hour live trading webinar coming up on May 17th. Larry Pesavento is a 56-year trading veteran and has mastered his trading skills through many different market fluctuations. Join Larry on May 17th as he hosts a live five-hour trading webinar from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, giving you insight into how he analyzes the market and decides his plays. Larry will delve deep into the ABCD trading pattern, explaining how to structure your trading day, the times most likely to generate signals, which signals to ignore, and how to use the pattern to mitigate risk. In this all-day five-hour live trading webinar, take a seat by Larry's side as he trades the market its real time, including the Dow and S&P 500 E-mini, crude oil, natural gas, gold, treasury bonds, wheat and soybeans, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, and more. If you've ever wanted to get inside the mind of a market master, you cannot miss this live trading webinar. To sign up today, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're talking with Shane Smolian and WolfTrader.com. Shane, tell the folks about the, the new uh, program that you have that does the astrology automatic. Uh, well, I have auto trading. It's for the polar R squared, and we just we just set it up. I mean, we just have we have live accounts going now, and we just started essentially started in the last week of live trading. Uh, but uh, if you want to get in touch with me about that, I can give you more information about it. Uh, that's if that's just to run. Uh, managed trades essentially through an auto trading service uh, okay. and, uh, and the, the brokerage will do that uh, if you want to get in contact with me uh, about that you can go to wolftraderfutures.com or fedjuice.com and uh, you can uh, there's a there's a page there on it where you can kind of just fill out some information to get get more info about it okay that sounds good and how do they reach you do you have an email or a phone number what's sure. the best way to do uh, it you can reach me at uh, shane at wolftraderfutures.com or you can go to www.wolftraderfutures.com, and um, you can uh, chat me up there. there. There's a Wix chat there where you can chat. And then again, uh, in terms of the auto trading, that those are going to be uh, publicly published results. So you can go and see those too. Uh, I have a lot of trading systems that I post results, but this this is an actual. These are out of brokerages account brokerage accounts uh, uh, that you can see uh, if you're interested in that. Hey, listen, thanks for joining us, my friend, and we will have you on again right near that May 16th date because it's going to be a big one, and maybe uh, that Monday you could be on the show, say the 17th, or the 16th is on a Monday, right? Correct, correct. Yeah. And that's that's okay. the day kind of hangs out around there, and then okay. typically it tends to, to fall off after that. 
Uh, okay, after what, eclipse. why don't you put us uh, pencil us in for the 16th, okay? Because I think okay. uh, these things have been so accurate. I think we're going to pay attention to that. Thanks for joining Sounds us, good. buddy. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Larry. Have a great day, everybody. You bet. Shane Smolian, folks. Uh, let's just take a look here. Uh, we're still in these little trading grades of these stocks and stuff. Uh, keep an eye on the crude oil, folks. So we get above that 107 level, this thing could really have legs. I mean, we went from 99 to 105 today. The 99, of course, was right at the 786 retracement. It stayed there for an hour, believe it or not. And uh, that's why uh, we, we sort of like that. So I think uh, one thing you want to remember, folks, is do something nice for your neighbors if you can, because everybody's having problems out there. And we'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. And our guest tomorrow will be none other than Paula T. Webb Douglas. We'll see you then, folks. May God bless. Mm -hmm.